Paragliding is the simplest and easiest way for man to fly. It is not only the lightest aircraft with no moving parts, but you can even carry it on your back in a rucksack. Nowadays, paragliders can stay up all day long and even fly hundreds of kilometers. There's nothing quite like the feeling of climbing in a thermal with a bird. This video does not teach you how to fly paragliders. That you need to learn at a paragliding school. We've made this film to help pilots fly more safely by demonstrating how to react in the most extreme situations a paraglider is likely to encounter. We shot the last instability film in 1992. Uh, a lot of the lessons that were taught in that instability film are still true today, but the gliders have developed quite a lot since then. Well, I think uh, the counter steering on collapses especially got a lot better. Gliders don't surge as much, they don't turn as much on the collapses. So um, today I think the problem is more that people do too much on the brakes than not enough. We have uh, all the equipment we need here to safely test gliders and to demonstrate for the purposes of this film. Each pilot is flying with a, a life jacket. We have a rescue boat. We have a helicopter as well for filming the whole thing from the air. We also have uh, two cameramen on the ground and also a camera on the, on the pilot as well. So hopefully we should get some really good shots to show you exactly what goes right and what goes wrong when you're SRV testing. Uh, Stefan is uh, all ready to go testing over the lake. He's going to be doing uh, radical maneuvers, so all this has to be done with the best safety precautions possible. That means doing all the tests high, over a lake, in calm conditions, and he's also wearing a life jacket, and he has a harness with two reserves. Uh, let me just show you his one reserve on the right side and the other reserve under the harness on the left side. The asymmetric collapse. This is one of the most important maneuvers in paraglider flying because it happens most frequently and is one of the most common causes of accidents. It's caused by turbulence collapsing one side of the wing. For the purposes of this film we're going to be simulating that by pulling on the A riser. Here you can see the pilot pulling on the right hand A riser and collapsing the right side of the wing. You then have to control your direction of flight. Here the pilot's collapsed the right, pulling the left side, and he's controlling quite strongly and it's actually turning in the opposite direction. Yeah, I noticed when I was doing the tests just now that normally, you know, 10 centimeters of counter steering is all you need, you know, so. And when, and when somebody puts their, their hand right down to their waist, uh, the glider stalls more easily than when it isn't collapsed. 
Here you can see a pilot gets a 70% asymmetric collapse and then he countersteers on the left hand side pulling about 15 centimeters of brake. If you countersteer too much then the glider risks to enter a cascade. Here you can see Stefan has about 15 centimeters of brake on. He applies a little brake on the right hand side and the glider reinflates on its own. There's no need to do any pumping. Here we have a larger asymmetric collapse and you can see the pilot actually weight shifting in the opposite direction as well as counter steering, which is another important thing to do. Here the pilot doesn't counter steer enough and the glider turns around 90 degrees. And if the collapse doesn't come out, if you just get a little bit of a stuck wing tip, usually um, a little bit of brake on the collapse side will fix that problem. So this lot of um, big pumps like we used to do before or hard pumps like this are not, not really necessary nowadays. You should let the glider just take its own time to come out, but the most important thing is to control the direction of flight rather than to concentrate uh, too much on getting out the collapse. The other thing that's changed a lot is um, pumping out deflations. Nowadays the gliders uh, reinflate on their own and you don't really need to do any pumping. Um, really as soon as, if, if you manage to counter steer the glider, normally the glider is already, already recovered um, before you even have, have realised. Here we have a series of asymmetric collapses and you should study these pictures carefully try and get a feeling for the way the glider moves and the way the pilot needs to react in order to fly safely and to control his direction of flight. The secret is the amount of brake you use, not using too much and combining it with weight shift in coordination at the right time. If, when you get a really large collapse you need to weight shift, you can see the pilot pushing on his left leg there to maintain left weight shift and counter steering at the same time. In this asymmetric the pilot uses so much weight shift and counter steer that he turns very effectively away from the hill to the right. A cravat is the worst kind of collapse where the sail gets caught in the lines and doesn't come out. We can see in some situations if you, if you get a cravat very often the glider doesn't rotate very much for the first five seconds or so and you have time to put on a little bit of brake and to control the direction of flight but if you don't do anything at all then the glider begins to pick up speed and within 1360 you're into a very severe spiral dive which is one of the most dangerous things which, uh, which can cause injury nowadays. Again the pilot has got the wing caught, he needs to control the direction of flight by applying right hand brake strongly. He applies a little right hand brake but not enough to stop the rotation. Here where pilot is slowing the wing down, looks like he's entering a spin now. The glider dives forward and you have a small cravat on the right hand side. This time the pilot has controlled the direction of flight and the glider recovers on its own. One thing that's very important is uh, not to overreact. I said in the asymmetric collapse that normally 10 centimeters of brake is all that is required and if you actually do too much or at the wrong time, then you make the problem much, much worse. So I would say 80, 90% of the time, it's better to let the glider fly on its own than to try to interfere with um, the glider's recovery. Yeah. In addition to the brake input and the collapses, it also helps a lot to use your body weight. So if your weight shift to the side, which is open, which is still inflated, that should make it not necessary to use the brake at all, at all, most of the times. It's very easy even if you get a 50 or 60 percent collapse, if you weight shift and turn the other direction, it's very easy to uh, even turn really quite sharply away from the collapse. So um, this is a very good safety feature. So it shows you how much brake you can do if you're doing it right. Uh, 
so that you can turn with it without stalling that the wing that's still flying. Here the pilot's doing a full stall. During the recovery, he doesn't put his hands up. This results in an asymmetric dive forward, which causes the pilot to get half a twist. Here you can see him untwisting himself, so he's facing forward again. This pilot has a collapse on the left side, over controls with the right hand side, causing the glide to spin and dive. He's going to do the same manoeuvre again, he gets the asymmetric on the right side, counter steers on the left too much, causing the glider to spin and stall in a cascade of manoeuvres. As soon as he puts his hands up, the glider flies off normally. Julian here is doing a series of spins as a result of overreaction. Here you can see the pilot's holding his left brake down, causing the glider to spin. During the recovery it dives forward, so he does a wrongly timed brake manoeuvre, causing the glider to enter a full stall. This pilot gets a front collapse, followed by an asymmetric collapse, which he counter steers. At this point, he's doing well. He applies too much brake on the left now, and enters a spin. Watch how as soon as he puts his hands up, the glider flies off on his own. With this helmet cam view, you can see the loss of pressure on the left side of the wing as the pilot applies too much brake, causing the glider to spin. As soon as he puts his hands up, the glider flies off again nicely. Here we have an asymmetric collapse, nicely counter steered for the moment, then he applies too much brake and the pilot enters a spin. Puts his hands up, the glider surges forward and comes out nicely. Here's Stefan flying left hand brake going to a spin. The spin does not recover whilst he still has a little bit of brake on. You can see his, he was holding his arms about shoulder level and the glider just carried on spinning. Here we have an asymmetric collapse viewed from the helmet cam. Over control on the left hand side causes a spin. You can see the loss of pressure on the left hand side of the wing and as soon as you put your arms up it recovers nicely. For the purposes of this film, we are inducing the full front collapse by reaching up with both hands and pulling both A-lines. This collapse is actually induced by turbulence from the helicopter. And you can look, looking at the helicopter on the left there, it's just flown above the pilot and he gets a big front collapse. You can see the whole wing disappears and the pilot looks up immediately to check what's happened. I very quickly within one second the, the glider reinflates and the pilot starts flying again. Collapses often happen when you least expect it. Don't overreact or panic. Look up and check the problem and then react. We've done quite a few front collapses uh, during this this test. Um, generally you can see from the front collapses we've done that a front collapse will recover on its own very quickly. Uh, sometimes you can have a deep stall phase during the recovery of a front collapse um, in which case it's, it's best to keep your arms up to stop the glider from um, staying in deep stall. But uh, yeah, generally speaking front collapses recover on, the on their own. Is that always the case for you Stefan? Well sometimes I find on uh especially when you're using the speed bar, you're going pretty fast, you get a big frontal. Uh, sometimes the glider sticks, doesn't want to come out by itself. Um, you recognize it that the whole leading edge is um, like collapsed. And in that case, you just want to put as much brakes as it takes to open the center of the glider. Generally, as soon as the center opens, you just bring your arms back up and the glider will recover. This pilot is having to throw his reserve after getting a big cravat on the glider, which causes a spiral dive.
There are different reasons you need to throw your reserve. The most common is a collapse quite close to the ground and you can't control the rotation as you see in this one. Um, also sometimes if you get collisions between two pilots and you get stuck in the lines, um, there's no way out. You need to deploy as soon and as fast as you can. This pilot is pulling in his main canopy to stop it getting tangled up in the reserve. If you don't control the main, then the, the main canopy can actually uh, stop the reserve from flying and get tangled in it. Now this pilot here pulls the bee lines down. You see that the reserve and uh, the main par paraglider, they both act as a to slow down the pilot and they don't interfere with each other. So bee lining after reserve deployment is uh, probably the easiest way to prevent any problems. Here they're uh, flying tandem. They get completely wrapped up in the glider. This reserve is quite unstable as well, which is not ideal. And they're very lucky not to land on that yacht. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this film. It gives you a feel of what things the pilot should be doing correctly and how the glider reacts if you make the right movements. And also, we try to show what happens if you, if you do the wrong actions as well and the likely reactions of the glider in all these situations. something about becoming a better pilot. We wish you many happy flying hours from all the team at Airwave.